Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasser Osman and this lecture is going to talk about inhalational anesthetic. What is inhalational anesthetic? It is a chemical compound possessing general anesthetic properties that can be delivered via inhalational way to the patient. Inhalational anesthetic agents can be either volatile anesthetic, i.e. the anesthetic is in the form of a liquid solution that is present in bottles, but this liquid is very volatile and can be transferred to vapor and the patient will inhale this vapor or present in a gas form that is stored in cylinder as gas. Example for volatile anesthetic is isoflurane, sevoflurane, and desflurane. Also historically, we used the ether as a volatile anesthetic agent, but we don't use it anymore, and the halothane or the fluthane. Also, we stopped using it because of its side effects. Example of anesthetic gases is the nitrous oxide. It is very common to be used in dental uh, uh, office and other surgery, but it is not common uh, to be used in Egypt nowadays. Minimum alveolar concentration or MAC. Each anesthetic agent has a specific minimum alveolar concentration or MAC. What is the MAC? The alveolar concentration needed to render 50% of spontaneously breathing patient unresponsive to a standard painful surgical stimuli, i.e. if we have 100 patient that is spontaneously breathing this concentration, 50 of them will not feel the surgical uh, stimuli, which is a scalpel cutting uh, a clean cut in his skin. And this concentration will be defined as MAC. MAC is inversely proportion to potency of the agent and help us as a guide to adjust the amount of anesthetic agent needed during anesthesia by modifying the concentration and of the anesthetic gases given to the patient this will help us to increase or decrease the concentration to make the patient unresponsive to the surgical stimuli the volatile agent as we have said before, are clear and colorless, non-flammable, non-explosive liquids at room temperature, but highly volatile agent. It needs what we call the vaporizers, which is in the, this picture, and each vaporizer has the same color code as the bottle that contain the specific anesthetic agent, as we are going to see later on. As we see, the violet is for the isoflurane, the yellow is for the sevoflurane, and the blue is for the desflurane. What about the pharmacokinetics of this agent? Delivery to the patient, of course, it's a volatile anesthetic, and so it is delivered to the patient through the inspired gas by inhalational method. After passing through the device, which is called the vaporizer that we have just talked about, and transfer the volatile liquid into vapor and adjust its concentration to the desired level. Each inhalation agent has its specific vaporizer designed specifically for this agent, so we should not fill one. Uh, vaporizer with a different agent 
not specified for it. So we only fill the sevoflurane, for example, vaporizer with sevoflurane, nothing else. And to prevent any accidental confusion, each agent has its vaporizer has a specific color code, as we have discussed before. Elimination and metabolism. Of course, as they are volatile and static agent, they are all exhaled unchanged by the lungs. Only a small portion is metabolized by the liver, and the metabolites are then excreted by the kidney. What about the pharmacodynamics? Its effect on the CNS. It produced a dose-dependent reduction in the cerebral activity and cerebr and so it represented as a reduction in the level of consciousness and EEG activity, i.e. loss of consciousness. Oxygen consumption is reduced by the central nervous system but the cerebral blood flow is increased and so it increased the intracranial pressure why because when we increase the cerebral blood flow to the brain which is a confined space by the skull the intracranial pressure will then increase they are all agent that have weak analgesic effect I mean the volatile inhalational agent. Respiratory system. The cause reduce in the minute ventilation by reduce the tidal volume, but increased in the respiratory rate. The respiratory response to hypoxia and hypercapnia is also reduced. But they have a very important property they all cause bronchodilatation so there is no problem for patient with for example bronchial asthma or contracted uh, airway diseases central venous vascular system or cardiovascular system cause myocardial depression by reducing myocardial contractility they reduce the sympathetic vascular resistance and change in heart rate. Some cause increase in the heart rate, some cause bradycardia. But all produce a net effect of hypotensive effect. Skeletal muscle, they reduce muscle tone and potentiate muscle relaxants. Effect of the uterus, cause uterine relaxation so may lead to postpartum hemorrhage so if we are having a uh, pregnant woman during delivery for example cesarean section or something like that and we are giving uh, this woman inhalational volatile anesthetic we use the minimal amount possible because this volatile anesthetic can cause uterine relaxation all volatile agent can trigger malignant hyperthermia, which is a very important condition and very dangerous. It causes severe increase in the uh, temperature of the patient with uh, rigidity and increased carbon dioxide production, and it may lead to fatal outcome. Basal metabolic rate. All inhalational agent reduce the basal metabolic rate. Emac of two reduce oxygen consumption by 30%. So, isoflurane, as we can see, has a violet code. So the bottle will be violet, and its vaporizer also will be colored in violet. Its Mac is 1.2%. It is irritant. So, therefore, we cannot use it for inhalational induction. 
Sevoflurane, on the other hand, has a yellow code and MAC 2%, but it is not irritant. So it is ideal for induction by inhalational method, especially for children. This fluorine has a blue color code, MAC of 6. This fluorine is a respiratory irritant and cannot be used for induction of inhalational agent. What about the anesthetic gas, which is example nitrous oxide? As we see, it has a blue color code most of the uh, time and it is stored in gas cylinders. Nitrous oxide is a colorless, odorless, non-irritant, non-flammable gas exist in a gas form at room temperature and atmospheric pressure stored in cylinder which is color coded blue nitrous oxide is a weak anesthetic but it is a good anesthetic agent this is the opposite of the volatile anesthetic agent that we have discussed before it is much more soluble than nitrogen so this causes a problem which is called the diffusion problem because it diffuses into the air filled space quicker than nitrogen can diffuse out of it this will lead to expansion of this space so if we have a space in the body that is filled of air this after giving the nitrous oxide, the nitrous oxide will diffuse into that space very quickly and cause its, its expansion. We can give some examples. Situation where this might be a problem include. For example, in the endotracheal cuff. The endotracheal cuff is filled with air. So the nitrous oxide will diffuse into the air much more rapidly than nitrogen comes out of it so it will expand and increase the pressure on the mucous membrane surrounding this endotracheal cough leading to its damage bowel expansion of course the bowel is full of air as well so if there is a uh, area of bowel that is uh, confined uh, to uh, making a gas bubble this gas bubble will increase in size simple pneumothorax might be another problem because it might change into tension pneumothorax after expansion air embolism also will have the same problem tympanic membrane bulging in the middle ear surgery also due to the diffusion of uh, nitrous oxide into this uh, air filled closed space physiological remarks which is very important nitrous oxide cause mild depression of respiration and myocardial function very mild it can cause post-operative nausea and vomiting which is the main side effect of nitrous oxide it is eliminated completely by the lung, so it is not metabolized at all in the body. Diffusion hypoxia, which is a very important thing that we should take care of. At the end of the anesthesia, when nitrous oxide is stopped, it diffuses out, into, uh, out of the tissues and the blood into the alveolar gas. Down its concentration gradient at a rate greater than nitrogen uptake. So this will dilute the oxygen percent in the alveoli, resulting in the patient uh, to go into hypoxia because the capillary blood is now exposed to a low oxygen concentration. This is avoided by giving the patient 100% oxygen at the end of the surgery during emergency from the anesthesia. Thank you.